Here is a very interesting question that will tie together the things we've been talking about today. And it's a very important question and you'll recognize its importance as soon as I state it. So what we're looking at is an integral in the physical sense that we defined in the last lecture. We have some quantity f. Maybe it's the linear mass density. Maybe it's the charge density. Maybe it's temperature. Although temperature is not something you would integrate because there is no such thing as total temperature. But me, it's some quantity where you might be interested in the total amount of that quantity. And that total amount is expressed by this physical integral, the first type of integral as we discussed last time. And its definition was just what I said right now. It's the total amount <laughs> uh, without any, any further clarification. And as such, it may be very difficult to evaluate because as you know, when things are defined geometrically, it requires a very talented person with a great deal of experience, tremendous ingenuity, and sometimes genius, uh, and sometimes genius of Archimedes caliber, to do anything. You know, so for example, to find area inside a parabola, you know, took Archimedes. And this is similar, because area is the total amount of space, this is the total amount of F. There are similar questions, and if we didn't have analytical methods, it would just keep requiring ingenuity and sometimes genius forever. But we're looking for robust analytical methods. That's the breakthrough of 17th century calculus that we're still benefiting from. So what we would like to do is to introduce a parameter gamma on the curve. And then f becomes, with the introduction of the parameter gamma, the, the conventional function f of gamma. You guys are with me? So before, without gamma, all you have is f. Then how would you use it? You can't say, what is f of 1? You can't. You, but you can say, what is f at this point? And somebody will tell you, and you'll say, that's very interesting. What about at this point? And somebody will tell you, or you'll measure it, or whatever. You have it, right? But you see it's a mapping from a point to real numbers. I just got formal for a second for no reason, right? But that's all it is, right? That's all. You can't take a derivative of it, really, because there is nothing to take a derivative with respect to. Okay, so we find that unsatisfactory because we're not Archimedes. We need something more robust. So we employ Newton's ideas. So we'll introduce a parameter gamma arbitrarily and now we have a function f of gamma. And I just did what I'll bet you you felt a little bit uncomfortable with just five minutes ago and it is using the same letter for two completely different things. Right? Because a moment ago f was just a field defined uh, on the curve. And you could only query it by saying, what is f here? What is f here? Now f is an ordinary function that you've encountered in calculus. So you can say, what's f of 1? What's f of 2? What's f of 3? And the answers would be one number, another number, another number. Does that make sense? So a totally different kind of object. And we're using the same letter. And you would agree with me that it's completely natural to use the same letter. And if I used a different letter, like lowercase f, you would start being confused. Okay, but in a moment, we'll take it a step further. We'll introduce an arbitrary other parameter gamma, an alternative parameter, capital gamma, and then f becomes a function of that parameter. And it would be a completely different function. If this is a completely different parameter, then this is a completely different function. They will have some of the same values, but only if you plug in different values of the different parameters. Does that make sense? So they would be completely different functions. They're not unrelated. In fact, how they're related will specifically write down how they're related, but they're completely different functions. Yet, we're using the same letter. And I think you'll agree with me that it's okay to use the same letter. There are books that I've seen where in a situation like this they would use different letters, and those books end up being much harder to read because there are just too many letters. So this is a better choice because these three functions are very much related. How are they related? Once again, through the curve. 
So if I took at this point, if I looked at this point, and suppose the value of f at this point was 7. Make sense? 7. 7 is the temperature, or uh, linear mass density is 7. That's the value of f. And suppose that the value of little gamma here was, I don't know, 3. Then this f, evaluated at 3, equals 7. Correct? Yeah. And suppose that the value of the parameter capital gamma was, for example, 11. Then this f at 11 also equals 7, because they both represent this field, which has nothing to do with any parameter. Does that make sense? So these two f's are different functions. And they're different from this field f, but they're all related. And they're all related in the way that you're, oh, this was an 11, <laughs> in the way that you're seeing on the board, and it makes sense. Does it? You guys agree with me that that relationship makes sense? So how do you distinguish them by looking at them? Well, that's why it's very important to now write which parameter is being used as the independent variable. I can't drop them. If I were to drop them now and just write f prime, right, now you don't know whether I'm talking about this value, this function and its derivative, or this function and its derivative. So I will always indicate the parameter, and then you'll, oh, it's the derivative of this function. But and if I wrote this, you would say it's the derivative of this function. Okay, so hopefully I've explained this potential confusion. Okay. And so now I will ask, I've already asked the fundamental question. I will now write down the fundamental guess for what I think the answer is. So what we want to do is translate this physical integral, which makes total intuitive sense. I insist on it. It's the total amount of f. How do you measure it? You have to be a genius. So we want to translate it into an arithmetic integral. And here's my guess on what it is. So suppose that gamma, little gamma, varies from a to b. So here's my guess. I will integrate from a to b. What other choice do I have? This is, by the way, where I would maybe think about introducing a different symbol. But I usually err on the side of fewer symbols, but there are different integrals. This one is the one where you, you would use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate. This one, you have to be Archimedes. And then I'll just plug in f of gamma. Good guess? Would this be your guess also? So, I will tell you the most important criterion. There are two criteria, which of course are equally important. But one of them is closer to my heart in terms of importance. First of all, which will be second of all, it has to give the right answer. It has to correspond to the total amount of f, right? So that would be nice. Of course that would be nice. But to me, it's even more important that if we use this recipe, but with respect to the other parameter, if we did it in the alternative parametrization, and for the alternative parametrization, we have to say that capital gamma changes from capital A to capital B, right? So of course we would use limits of integration that correspond to capital gamma, right? So this is me doing the exact same thing in the alternative parametrization. It is very important that these two integrals give the same answer. Do you guys agree? Because if they give different answers, then there is no chance that the answer is correct, okay? And I would say that if, if they give the same answer, even if that answer is wrong, right, it's interesting. It's already a success. That's the bigger success than actually getting the right, the right value. Okay, so let's see. Uh, do you have a guess? Do you think that's correct? Let's see how I would approach this. I would do the following thought experiment. So suppose I will just go for very, very specific numbers and just see what happens. So suppose that lowercase gamma varies from 0 to 1. Now I'm just trying to make it 
as specific an example as possible. Okay, great. So then the integral will be from 0 to 1. And, and suppose, suppose that f is such that with respect to this parameter, it just becomes sine of gamma, right? This particular f. Can we consider this particular f that just f that in this parametrization just happens to have equal sine of gamma, right? That so imagine that that's what we discovered, that f is given, and if we introduce some parameter gamma in some very specific way, we'll take a look at what f equals at different points and realize that it's sine of gamma. Just that specific example. So then we end up with this. Let's pretend that it goes from 0 to pi. So little gamma goes from 0 to pi. So that's the hypothetical situation that I'm considering. And then the answer is 2, right? becomes minus cosine of gamma, you plug in pi, it's 1, you plug in 0, it's minus 1, because it's minus cosine gamma, so it becomes 1 plus 1, 2. Beautiful. Okay, now I'm considering an alternative parameter, gamma, and I want it related to little gamma by this identity. Fair? Can I consider this? alternative parameter? Yes, I can. It will change from 0 to 10 pi. It will change from 0 to 10 pi. So if I, I use, use the, the exact same recipe for this parameter, what will f of capital gamma look like? I think that it will be sine of capital gamma over 10. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Because whatever value, so for example, little gamma here might, might equal 2, right? And then, which means that capital gamma equals 20. So when we plug in gamma here, it will be sine of 2. So here it would need to be sine of 2 also. And because gamma equals, capital gamma equals 20, we got to divide it by 10 to get the same value. Do you see how the starting point is the fact that it's the same invariant function, it's the same field. That's what I'm going back to. It's not that the new function will be sine of capital gamma. That's not what remains constant. What remains the same from one parameterization to another is not how the function reads, but the but that it has to represent the same geometric physical field F. Does that make sense? So it gives us this anchor that, it, we, that always reminds us of what it is that we're representing and what it is that stays the same while other things around change. So it'll be this. Do I have your agreement? That in this new parameterization, the same field F is given by this function. So I'm now going to plug it in here. And do you see that this equals 20? Because if we, want, if we want this to still equal 2, we would need an additional factor of 1 over 10, so we can use this formula, right? We would need this 1 over 10, because that's what the derivative of this g of x is, right? And it's not there, it's missing. It's not part of our recipe, right? So this would equal 20. So this guess has failed the more fundamental of the two criteria that I've postulated? That's a very good question. So the question is, you know, you have to change this to gamma over 10. So let me tell you, let me show you how that's both 100% right and also 100% wrong. Let's read this in words. This was our formula. Let's translate it into words, which is a very, very important step. To convert the physical integral to the arithmetic integral, we will write an integral where the limits of integration correspond to the range of our parameter. That's not controversial. Then we'll take our physical function, uh, convert it to a conventional function of real variable, right? That's what the, the integrand will be. And then we'll integrate it with respect to that variable. Those are the words. I think you are, may have been in agreement with those words when I first implied them. So when I use the same words 
with respect to capital gamma, it would have to be this, right? Now, if you think about capital gamma and you treat it fairly, which means you can't reference some other parameter, right? Now, capital gamma is our arbitrarily chosen parameter. It's an equal citizen. You can't relate it to some other parameter. And I use the same words. It, I would have to use its limits of integration, the range of that new parameter, express the physical function with, as a function of that parameter, and then integrate it with respect to that parameter. I use the same recipe, so I really leaned on my words. Yeah, so the words are wrong. So there needs to be, that's right, you, we need to put in one-tenth, right? But we can't do it by referencing some other parameter, right? We have to do it in a way that's natural, but also in a way that, given a parameterization, only refers to that parameterization. You can't refer to arc length. You can't refer to Cartesian coordinates in the ambient space. You can't refer to anything except the one parameterization that you chose.